ahead. Okay. All right. Well, I, I, I thank, thank you all for coming today. Uh, just wanted to uh, take the opportunity to uh, share some things with you to let, uh, let you all know and let the citizens know that we're keeping our promises that we made last year, uh, specifically when I was campaigning for, uh, to become the new county judge. And uh, uh, today we're going to discuss three of the uh, largest of the projects that we're currently working on. Of course, the largest of all uh, involves our, our county law enforcement, our sheriff's office. And uh, I invited the sheriff to come over and tell you a little bit about what he plans to do with the resources that uh, the, the county is now able to give him. Uh, particularly the commissioner's court approved uh, two new full-time deputies uh, for the sheriff and for a county our size to do that at once that's a big step uh, and I hope the public realizes uh, that that is a display of our commitment to their public safety and one of them is going to be uh, 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 very near and dear to my heart which is something I wanted to tell you about in the beginning is uh, uh, we're going to be stepping up our environmental enforcement in Brown County, uh, particularly junk cars, uh, cars that have uh, uh, batteries still left in them, uh, uh, tires left on them, anything that, that is a violation of, uh, of uh, the environmental uh, code, uh, both state and federal. And uh, for example, uh, uh, a constituent, uh, a resident sent me a picture uh, just the other day of j so many junk cars in the ditch and halfway on the road that they could barely get to their own property up around the lake. So we're, uh, we're going to be aggressively uh, uh, taking that. And I'm also going to be launching a volunteer county cleanup program for junk vehicles. And what that, what that means is a lot of people have junk vehicles around their property uh, when they live outside the city limits where there's no city code. And that's not a violation as long as it's not, if they're not an environmental hazard uh, to be uh, uh, compliant as I understand it uh, they would have to have no battery in the car no tires on the car and we all we all know that that's that's usually not the case with junk vehicles so what we're going to do uh, to make the environment better and to make sure nothing uh, no toxins or anything are leaking into our lake uh, we're going to the sheriff is going to put out in a full-time environmental deputy and I'll let him tell you about that but the, the how it's near and dear to my heart is that was the number one complaint that I got that I received whenever I was uh, uh, out camp on the campaign trail, uh, almost everywhere I went, there was a concern about environmental enforcement. So we are going to be doing something about that. We've been doing something. Uh, the sheriff has already had a deputy committed to that, but it was only committed part time. And and uh, for a county of almost 40,000 people, that's just not enough. So we we got him a new full time. We stepped that up to full time. And then he's also got another full time deputy. And I'm going to let him tell you how he's going to use that and what his goals are as far what he's going to target for the next year. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll pass the torch on to uh, the sheriff first and then afterwards uh, to uh, Bob Contreras, our grants and government affairs coordinator, and then lastly we'll bring in our emergency management uh, director so he can tell you about the new chaplain programs. Make a lot of noise, don't you? Good morning, y'all. Uh, going into this year's budget, my main priority, I had, I had two priorities I wanted to address with the commissioners. Number one being two-part is safety, and then the second one was officer retention and officer attraction, uh, trying to get our salaries up there to be more competitive, at least with the local agencies. But on the safety level, uh, number one is community safety, and number two was officer safety. So therefore, I requested two additional deputies for the patrol division specifically. Uh, this is going to increase our manpower and our ability to answer calls. And it's also going to be a, an officer safety issue, allowed me to have more deputies out on the streets uh, to take care of the issues that we need. A lot of times, I only had one deputy out there by themselves answering these uh, pretty uh, high risk calls. But now we're going to be able to keep a minimum of two deputies 24 hours a day. Uh, we're fixing to switch to a 12 hour rotation, which is going to automatically increase our manpower and ability to answer the calls for service. Uh, the issue with the environmental deputy, uh, Sadie Hammonds has been part time with my department for, she's been there close to a year now. Uh, she's doing an excellent job. Uh, but the way we were structured in the patrol division, uh, she was only able to do her environmental duties on a part-time basis as long as the calls would allow her to do such. And, and she's taken some great bounds and leaps getting the county cleaned up. 
but with the creation of her full-time position now, uh, then we're going to be able to do a lot more with that. And I do want to thank the Commissioner's Court for listening to my concerns and the issues that I was facing as Sheriff, and I want to thank them for, for helping us move forward uh, for officer safety and citizen safety and officer retention. Questions? Uh, that's that's an issue every year that's something that we're faced with the county population keeps growing uh, it's at a minimal but it's growing uh, therefore our calls for service are increasing and it was to a point where some of our calls for service the low priority calls were having to wait more than an hour maybe two hours before we could have a deputy respond and and I do know that this is going to help with those issues uh, Every patrol deputy, everyone excluding myself, is going to get a $4,000 a year raise. That's going to put our starting pay up to $38,241 per year. Uh, that's a substantial jump. Uh, last year we were able to increase it by another $2,000, so it's been $6,000 in the last two years that my deputy's pay has been increased. Uh, it's already boosted the morale. Uh, people are excited. I uh, had a couple of people looking at going to different agencies uh, and they've reassured me that they're going to stay with me and, and be a part of our growth and expansion. Uh, that it? Bob, you up? Yes, sir. I guess Thank I am. Thank you much. Thanks so much. Good morning. Uh, I'm Bob Contreras. I'm the grants writer and government relations coordinator for the county. I just want to let you all know that Judge Lilly and his campaign promised to bring a veterans court to Brown County and he, we're working to do that uh, even as we speak. Our county serves, our administration, administration health clinic serves 2,801 veterans in the county and our veteran service officer serves 1,528. Uh, so we're going to create a veterans court with the help of local mental health agencies and psychologists. There's little or no cost associated with this. It's merely a, a matter of setting up your docket so that all of those people who claim that they may have PTSD or something that influenced their crime, we see them all on the same day. So there's not a lot of cost associated with it. Offenders could face probation or treatment or even jail. Um, but whether or not a person is eligible rests with the county attorney and with the county judge. Any questions on that? So what court and what judge would that? Well, this would be Judge Lilly, and the court would be the county court. Uh, it's just a it's just a uh, a separate court. The judge is there. Is there? Sure, if you want to come in, uh, it's a uh, it is a it's a uh, basically we would designate one day. And uh, the, any defense attorneys would, would know that if they have a client that they're claiming suffered from PTSD and that was a direct result of him committing a misdemeanor, and I stress this is for misdemeanors only, then that day we would take that under consideration. And, and as, as uh, Mr. Contreras said, I would also have uh, uh, Center for Life Resources uh, and all the necessary uh, elements within the community to provide assistance for that PTSD there on that day. And, as, as a presiding judge, I can tell you, for example, I, I might, uh, as a part of uh, the sentencing for a misdemeanor, say, uh, uh, for example, someone claims that they got their first DWI or even their second, uh, and they drink as a result of uh, PTSD from military service. Well, then I would take that into consideration. It does not excuse the behavior in any way. Uh, but uh, in sentencing, what I might do is reduce the amount of, of punishment uh, in lieu of court-ordered counseling with Center for Life Resources, and that would, that would be uh, how we would uh, assist that veteran and, uh, and, and with, with their PTSD and any other issues that they're suffering from. And, and we have a large, uh, for the size of our po county population, as Mr. Contreras said, we have a large, uh, or rather large, uh, veteran uh, uh, population. Uh, so, uh, and we're very, very thankful to have the Center for Life Resources located right here in our county, even though they cover six or eight counties, I forget, and, and now they're it's talking about adding additional responsibilities to them, but they're based right here, so we have a wonderful resource right up the street, and we're going to use it. Any, any other questions? 
What's the timeline for getting it up and running? Uh, I hope to have the first one uh, before the before the uh, calendar year is over. And again, it's just going to be a one designated day uh, that that we hear nothing but, uh, or, or not nothing but. We'll hear other cases, but if you if you have uh, a case that involved that you're going to, uh, the defense attorney is going to assert PTSD, you may would come on that particular day. Uh, so I, my target is uh, uh, probably November. Have the first one in November. Uh, and again, we're just talking one day a month. Uh, but uh, the, we don't have a lot of crimes that uh, that, that uh, claim occurred as a result of PSD, but we do have some, and I want to I want to give them the opportunity to get the help they need, for, uh, you know, because they they have uh, if it's designated if it's diagnosed formally diagnosed PTSD that is a result of their service to our country, and we owe them everything we can give back to them, and this is this is one way we're going to do this, and it costs us uh, on many occasions nothing uh, uh, other than our time. Uh, in the courtroom, and, and I'm doing it uh, under my current uh, county salaries. There's no, we're not bringing in an extra judge. There's no ancillary costs. Uh, uh, and if there is, if once we get into it, we find out there is, uh, uh, Mr. Contreras has identified a fantastic grant program that uh, we could uh, request reimbursement funds from. So I don't anticipate it costing the county taxpayer a dime. Yeah, this program excludes uh, violent crimes. There's no no violent crimes at all that will be considered in that program. Yeah, I can't stress enough. It's misdemeanors only. Misdemeanors only. Things that would be handled. Those are criminal offenses. I give you an example: criminal mischief, DWI, uh, family violence, uh, that sort of uh, uh, crime. That, uh, that and those types of crimes happen far more often than felonies. Uh, so that's that's what we're going to address. We're excited about it. Any other questions on this one? Any other questions concerning that? Okay, if not, I have a sheet for you. But we have currently, we have six grants in play right now. By in play, I mean that we have already submitted them and they've gone through all the processes up until the decision point. So all the grants that we apply for in the county are competitive. It means like maybe out of three or four hundred maybe 50 will get granted depending on the pot of money and the number of applicants. So we have $308,074 in grants out there right now and we should start hearing in the next week or two uh, whether we've, we've gotten the final approval on them. I do have a, an information sheet for me, but the largest is uh, from Commissioner Shaw's precinct, $214,000 to fix uh, the low water crossing 368, which, which the county spends about up to $45,000 a year to maintain. So if we can fix it one time and make it into a concrete and still reinforced structure, that'll save taxpayers a bunch of money. Commissioner Kelton is very concerned about the water uh, situation in May, and so we're working on just really revitalizing that system. We have a backup generator uh, for $40,000 for a grant with the Texas Div Division of Emergency Management. And we're working also with the LCRA to replace all 12 of their uh, water shutoff valves in the system. The system is built in 1961, so infrastructure is, is a great concern for Commissioner Kelton and, for, and should be for everybody. You know, there are currently, uh, in the last few years, five communities in Texas where it literally lost their water. And so I just applaud Commissioner Kelton for having the foresight to just, just not let that happen in May, Texas. So I do have some information sheets for you. Are there any other uh, any other questions? No? Judge? All right. Uh, he's going to hand some information sheets out to you. Uh, last today, we wanted to speak to you. Uh, uh, well, I want to talk about the topic of, um, topic of emergency management. And uh, we have, uh, Dave, I know you're off camera. Is it 12 total fire departments, 10 of which are completely volunteer? in the county, 12 total. Uh, early uh, fire department has uh, a half volunteer and half paid. And uh, of course, Brownwood is a 100% paid fire department. Uh, the services they provide are, are just like law enforcement. They're amazing. They're, uh, and, uh, uh, we can't say thank you enough. Again, I spent uh, over a quarter of a century in public safety myself. Uh, so I know I, I speak directly. And this year, for the first time in many, many years, many years, the commissioner's court, all working together, uh, were able to increase, in some cases, double, uh, if not more, the funding the county provides to uh, the volunteer fire department. So we don't provide them a lot. Uh, 
I believe uh, somewhere around 120 to 130 thousand dollars per year. The exact number I'm wanting to say is 120 to 800, but I'm not certain on that. But I'm, I'm pretty confident. Uh, uh, that we provide per year divided up among the fire departments and of course uh, it's very hard to, t to decide who needs to get what increase so this year we just simply try to get everybody as close to the same we, we just try to uh, take the amount of money that we could afford to provide them and just divide it by 12. Uh, I know that some fire departments answer far more calls but it doesn't mean there's any less equipment maintenance for the uh, smaller fire departments who have no other resources coming in to help keep the tires uh, aired up and running and the engines running on the fire trucks. It's no good to have a volunteer fire department uh, when their fire truck won't even start and they can't get it out of the bay uh, to respond to the emergency. So we're, we've increased that significantly. We're quite proud of that. It's the first time we've been able to do that in years. Um, and uh, uh, now talking about emergency management, I'm gonna introduce uh, Mr. David Creed, our emergency management coordinator. <clears throat> and he's going to talk to you about, again, as I mentioned before, the, the new volunteer chaplain program and feel free to ask him any questions. It's a brand new program, so uh, we're still working out all the kinks, but uh, I think it's gonna be fantastic. And again, it is absolutely no cost to the taxpayer. It's totally free. Uh, it's a, just a, a service where we found, like everyone in their homes, uh, everybody in their private lives have to find ways to do more with less. Uh, that's exactly what we're trying to do with the county government, as much as we can uh, without uh, increasing the uh, taxes one penny. So now our, I want to add again, our budget has not been finalized, but uh, pretty much all the workshops are complete and everything is set. And we'll, we're, we're at the stage now where we're going to go through the public hearings to finalize it. I don't anticipate anything changing. So I'm very comfortable talking about it. So I'll introduce Dave. Any questions for me before I stand up? What is the budget? What is the total budget? Uh, I, actually, it, it's, it's still being uh, worked out. Uh, uh, it's around, uh, it's in the low 20, uh, uh, 21 million, I believe, 21. Uh, just under 22 million and uh, the commissioners actually are going to uh, the, the plan is to reduce uh, the tax rate just a little bit uh, to help uh, those people out in the community who uh, a lot of people this year their property was reassessed for the first time in a while and their tax uh, their pro their tax rate went up considerably so not only did we not increase taxes uh, uh, we're trying to reduce it as much as we can it's not a lot but but every every penny counts these days does it not uh, but to answer your question, around 21, 21 between, between 21 million and 22 million is what I'm expecting. And again, it could uh, the auditor has it, and she's massaging the final numbers. It could change a little bit. It could go up, could go down. I don't anticipate it going down uh, because it won't be less than we had last year. So, right. I, I'll bring in David Creed for you. It's our last last speaker that wants to talk to you today. Good morning. Save the best for last. As Judge said, my name is David Creed. I'm the uh, emergency management coordinator for Brown County. Um, recently, we had uh, finished discussion over the topic of uh, the chaplaincies that exist here in the county. The police department and uh, the county sheriff's office have their own chaplains. And uh, during that discussion, we discovered that the fire departments do not seem to have any chaplains out there. Uh, a lot of people wonder what the significance of having a chaplain is. Well, <clears throat> it's like a lot of other things, including fire departments, police departments. Until you need one, uh, yeah. So what we're thinking is, and I've talked to um, a couple of the local chaplains, they've agreed to uh, staff it on a volunteer basis, uh, and all of our chaplaincies will be uh, volunteer, won't cost anything. They're volunteering their time, their expertise, all the people that are experienced and trained. The interesting thing about it is this will place out into the uh, communities and uh, at the uh, essentially at a, at a phone call, these uh, volunteers will respond uh, either with the fire department or to the fire department, depending upon what the needs are. And what they're designed to do, what their main reason is, is just comfort and support to the firefighters 
and the first responders out there. Uh, the reason for this, and I discovered this after, uh, well, somewhere it, during the course of my over 40 years as a police officer, you get out there and you see things other people don't want to see. You get out there and you, you go to places where things of just horrible nature have taken place, and you've got no way except talking to your uh, partner, your buddy, or your, your spouse about it and, and kind of uh, debriefing on that nation, and that, that doesn't work. It, I mean, it works a little bit, but if, if we've got uh, professional trained chaplains out there that can talk with the, the folks, we're hoping that that will uh, decompress situations enough where these guys can go back to the house and not take it with them and not be burdened by it. One extra added thing that uh, we had discussed was the, the value of having the chaplains would also allow us to bring forth assistance to people out in the county that have suffered some kind of a critical incident, whether it's a major accident, uh, maybe nobody's been hurt, but if anybody's ever been in an accident in a car, you know that for the next week, you're just twitchy. It, I mean, there's no way of getting around it. Somebody slams a door and you jump. Uh, you, you restless, uh, you got only one thing on your mind and that's what happened and the chaplains would be available to talk with these people and for the most part just explain to them that what they're feeling is completely normal and it's okay and if they needed uh, some different kind of uh, assistance they could show them where they could go to to get maybe more counseling uh, the other thing is uh, you have house fires, you have all sorts of critical incidents out there that the, the fellows will be responding to. And in these occasions, they will be available to the families and to the victims uh, that are out there. Uh, essentially, uh, it's all volunteer. It doesn't cost us anything. Uh, the uh, chaplains will be dispatched by the dispatch office as soon as a need is uh, expressed and again at no cost uh, let us know you need us and we're coming uh, they will be underneath the uh, auspices of the emergency management office um, so if you have any questions I'll be glad to answer them I'm here for you what they currently work here they do. They're, they're both local residents. They've been here a long time. They've got a lot of expertise. They've got a lot of uh, uh, training under their belt. And uh, they're actually well known to a lot of the people in the community. So, and, and of course we have two now. We're gonna open it up. I imagine that uh, by the time we get this thing kicked off and running good, we'll have enough that two guys aren't having to do the, the load of the work. A lot of times they won't be called out, but if they are called out, you know, sometimes you have several victims at a location, and it might take more than one person to be able to handle that. Who are the two? Uh, right now we're looking at Dave Fair and uh, Rick Phelps. And um, when do you, the program is not yet running? We don't have it completely up and running yet. Um, Rick, Dave, and I have been talking about it we're all on the same page and it's one of those things where they've been responding um, under color of the uh, police department and the sheriff's office already so they're already they're already on the phone roster they know their phone can ring they're ready to go okay don't hit me with them all at once okay. all right I want to give you a, a couple of last uh, quotes on you know, it's a fantastic experience that uh, that I brought to the, the Office of County Judge. Like I said, over 25 years of uh, public safety experience, a great deal of that, over 20 years, was as a police chief. So I understand the needs, the stresses, and, and uh, uh, the demands on law enforcement, particularly our sheriffs, even our, our, our municipal 
uh, police departments and police chiefs, but the, the county's law enforcement agency is the sheriff, and also we have four constables. I don't want to leave them out. They do an excellent job. But <clears throat> my job as county judge uh, is uh, uh, to assist them in anything that they might need. That's how I portray, each judge uh, portrays their role differently. That's how I portray, that's how I see my, my duties. Uh, I stand absolutely, uh, unquestionably, and 100% behind uh, uh, Sheriff Van Hill. He's doing a fantastic job. He has my full support, uh, and and if he needs something, he picks up the phone that he can't get himself. He picks up the phone and says, "Hey, you know, Judge, uh, we could use this resource down here at this incident. Uh, uh, for example, the the very unfortunate uh, uh, vehicle uh, fl uh, driving off into." Uh, uh, the river and uh, uh, the, the death of a, a very unfortunate death of a young lady uh, and, and the time that we, we spent weeks upon that that was a resource where the sheriff needed additional services so we uh, I was able to con we got the game warden service we got uh, uh, lots of agencies involved anyway my role in, in public safety is to, to be an asset to them uh, uh, to, to stand behind them and, and provide them with whatever they need uh, uh, each judge sees their sees uh, their, their role in, in that differently and that's mine. That's how I see it. So I, I'm happy to answer any questions for you. Related to the volunteer fire department? Yes. Uh, you had talked previously about wanting to hoping to disperse some of the leftover pretrial diversion. I did. It turns out that uh, 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 unbeknownst to me at the time I, I wanted to make sure that uh, that was we could do that and it turns out the Attorney General's office said well nothing says you can't but nothing says you can and his opinion was we would rather you use that for a criminal justice purpose. So uh, we were able to find the money uh, elsewhere to give the, exactly what we've given the fire departments is what I wanted to give them with the pretrial diversion funds. But when I was told uh, after the fact, many weeks after we all met, uh, that uh, that was uh, uh, questionable whether I, that I could use those for that, uh, we went and found the, the resources to help the fire departments elsewhere. Uh, so they still got the assistance that was promised, but I did not use the pre-trial version. I do have a, a, another criminal justice related plan for that. I, I'm not at liberty to, to talk about it just yet, but you will get a, a forthcoming announcement on that very soon as to what I plan to do with that. It's approximately 100 and, uh, just under $115,000, I believe. Uh, and uh, so I, I'm gonna try to source that solely for uh, criminal justice. and. Uh, uh, like I said, I, we've got things in works. We just can't say anything yet. <laughs> it's not inked, as they say, <laughs> so I'm not ready to announce it yet. Any other questions? So in terms of you're talking about that you did find other funds. Yes. Part of, part, part, are you talking about the, uh, from the budget that you referenced Yes, earlier? from the general budget, okay. right. Uh, uh, remember when, when I said I wanted to use the pretrial version, that was early in this fiscal year. Uh, and then when I couldn't, we just had to make do with what we had. But now I made sure in the forthcoming uh, uh, budget year, I work very closely, especially with Commissioner Shaw, to make sure that uh, 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 we we took care of our volunteer farming. They're out there doing that for free. I mean, heaven's sake, we, we want to give them all the resources we possibly can. So we found the same amount of money. Uh, actually, we found more. If you recall the, the figure that I gave you, uh, they, they actually got more than what I had in the pre-trial diversion to disperse. So it, it, it all walked, worked out in the end. So quite proud of that because it's a very tight budget. Uh, we don't have a lot of wiggle room, but we, we made sure our first responders were taken care of, and we're all quite proud of that. I, I can't thank the uh, entire court enough for working together. Uh, unfortunately, you know, through part of that process, I, I had a, a medical issue, so I missed uh, one of the meetings. Uh, I felt terrible about that, but they, uh, they picked up the slack where I wasn't there and made sure that everything we were working on was pushed forward, so I'm, I'm very proud of all of them. Any other questions before I leave? Before y'all leave? Uh, we don't do this very often. That's why I wanted to. Uh, we, uh, we 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 ought to get together more often, but we just don't have a whole lot of news for you. <laughs> All right. Thank y'all.